Thanks for joining us for Five on Five. I'm Joe Sullivan. Pleased to be joined today with Angela Wilhelms. Angela, thanks for stopping by. Thank you for having me, Joe. It's great to be here. Angela is the president and CEO of Oregon Business and Industry. And right off the top, what does Oregon Business and Industry do? Thanks for asking. OBI is a statewide nonprofit membership organization. We represent um, businesses of all sizes, from all industries, and from each of Oregon's 36 counties, primarily in state government, state level policy issues. Uh, with a mission towards creating a healthy, prosperous, and competitive economy in Oregon. We are talking Measure 118 today. You are against this measure. It's on the ballot in November. Oregon rebate. Everybody at home would get $1,600. Why are you against this measure? Well, as I mentioned, OBI's mission is to create a healthy, prosperous, and competitive economy. And we think Measure 118 just flies in the face of that mission. Measure 118 is the largest tax increase in Oregon's history. It raises about $7 billion a year through a tax on a business's sales, not on its profits or income, but on sales. When you tax sales, you have higher prices. You have higher prices actually not just at the final point of sale, like a traditional sales tax, but throughout the supply chain. It makes Oregon companies less competitive. It costs consumers more at a time when they're already struggling with inflation. And it also manages to punch a giant hole in the state budget, as Governor Kotek pointed out. Yes, on 118 says this measure, if voted in, would decrease poverty by half. Do you agree with that? I haven't seen their study that they use to uh, emphasize that. But what I know is that economists have told us publicly, the nonpartisan legislative revenue office economists have said, Measure 118 will reduce growth in jobs, in wages, in incomes and in population, and it will lead to higher prices for consumers, including on things like food, medicine, medical services, insurance, necessities. So I don't see how any of that adds up to be a recipe for lifting people into prosperity. What would the impact on Measure 118, if voted in, be on small businesses? Oh, it would be extremely negative on small businesses. You know, the proponents love to just talk about um, big businesses and certainly they'll be affected and pass prices on to consumers. But small businesses, Main Street, let's take a restaurant for example. An independent restaurant is going to see their costs go up for insurance, for internet, for that TV in the bar, for um, supplies and equipment, and of course for food and drink. All of that means they're going to have to raise menu prices or cut costs like jobs potentially even close. We're hearing from small businesses all over the state that are very worried about Measure 118. All right, we're just getting started with Measure 118, talking about the negative impacts if passed. We'll be right back with part two after this short break. Stay with us. Welcome back to part two. We're talking Measure 118 and the negative impacts on it with Angela. And Angela, talk about the impact that it would have on the legislature. Do you think that money would go to the Oregonians if it passed? Well, you know, this measure is so deeply flawed um, that the legislature, I think, realizes it's not good for state government and it's not good for Oregonians. That's why so many state officials, Republicans and Democrats, have come out against it. We know that this will blow a giant hole in the state budget, which funds critical services like education and public safety. So legislators are going to have to figure out how to solve that problem. And yeah, this is a statutory measure, which means the legislature can amend it at any time now or in the future. They could raise the tax rate. They could loop more businesses in so more businesses are directly affected. And they could take that distribution. That distribution is not a promise the proponents can make to voters. How difficult is it to get your message across? Because on paper it says, wow, I need $1,600. Most people do. How difficult is that message to get across in the long run? It may cost consumers more. You know, voters are smart. Oregonians are smart. They know there's no such thing as a free lunch. Uh, they know that someone pays for this, and they know that at the end of the day, it's the consumers, whether that be an individual or a household, or whether the consumer is a small business or, or even a government entity itself. So they know someone's gonna pay for this. You can't just 
generate $7 billion in tax revenue out of thin air. Uh, consumers are going to pay for this, and I think voters understand that. Um, they also understand, the public understands that this measure is opposed by so many different organizations, nonprofits, businesses, left-leaning think tanks, right-leaning think tanks, Democrats, Republicans, labor unions, business, the teachers union, it said I could go on and on and on. And that speaks to how deeply flawed the measure is, and I think voters are, understand that. We've got about 30 seconds left. Is there anything you want to touch upon? I just, you mentioned it, you know, it, it is hard to communicate in campaign seasons, especially noisy ones that are dominated by, you know, federal politics. And I just encourage voters to go to our website, which is knowonmeasure118.com, and, and learn more and read the facts, and then join our coalition and, and ultimately vote no on Measure 118. Angela, thank you very much yeah. for stopping by. I appreciate thank you, it. Joe. All right, we'll be right back with more local news. Stay with us.